what we're showing here, although we don't actually say it, are the so-called mu values. These are the numerologies of the 5G radio interface or subcarrier configurations effectively. So what we have is a numerology, so a mu equals zero. And when mu equals zero, we have a 15 kilohertz subcarrier spacing, which of course leads to a 66 microsecond symbol period. Now that's LTE basically, isn't it? But then the options start getting a little bit more exciting where we have mu equal to one, where we have doubled the subcarrier spacing. And of course, because one over F equals T, we have half the symbol period. And then we've got mu equals two, mu equals three, and mu equals four. So we've got various configurations of subcarriers that we have there. All you need to know to understand this is, as we said, one over F equals T. And of course, the uh, reverse is also true. But you've got to start thinking now, why did we do this? Why is it important that we have a variable subcarrier configuration and, of course, a variable symbol configuration? Well, if you remember that little discussion about the propagation environment and the coherence bandwidth, that was how we got to this, this 15 kilohertz. We said, okay, it needs to work indoors, but it probably needs to work outdoors. So with LTE, what we did is we kind of picked a worst case scenario and we said, right, let's design the system to work in the most challenging possible place, which happens to be, you know, outdoors, the open rural uh, type of environment. So if you can make it work in those environments, it will work equally well indoors as well, because you, you're massively overprotected when you bring the LTE system you know, indoors or into the, into the downtown area, but it perhaps isn't the most efficient and it's that 15 kilohertz which is related to that coherence bandwidth, which really determines the overall performance of the system. But it's not optimal for all deployment scenarios. If we're prepared to make a compromise, what we can do is we can increase the subcarrier spacing, which now means that the minimum coherence bandwidth that we can now accommodate is around 30 kilohertz. So that means that a 30 kilohertz numerology will not perform as well has a 15 kilohertz numerology in a wide open area. Fading will start to cause problems with the radio interface. But well, the, the answer then of course, is that where you have the wide open area, well, you don't use the 30 kilohertz numerology, you use a 15 kilohertz numerology. And as you start to approach the uh, suburban, urban and dense urban areas, you can choose then higher and higher numerologies. So practically speaking, we only go as far as 120 kilohertz. Uh, now you'll notice as well that that reduces symbol period down to around about eight microseconds, but that might be suitable for a very, very small cell in a very dense urban sort of downtown area. So we're not worrying so much about the, the multipath and the delay spread and such like now, just because we know that in those areas, the echoing environment is not as challenging. So we're able to make a, a use of the time domain and the frequency domain in a slightly more efficient way. Now, the other thing as well, that I hope you notice is that if the symbol time is reducing, does that mean that the symbol rate is increasing? Well, it kind of does because in a one millisecond TTI, what we're able to do with a 15 kilohertz subcarry spacing and a 66 microsecond symbol, we are able to transmit up to 14 symbols of information in one millisecond. Now the, the math is not so hard here, but if we double the subcarrier spacing to 30 kilohertz and we half the symbol time then in the same period of time so one millisecond well how many symbols are we going to transmit well it's going to be double that isn't it so 28 the symbol rate is increasing as we increase the numerology for the different the different 5g uh, options here and then of course we double it again to 56 and then you know 112 symbols so this might also be useful for increasing the potential throughput and also addressing some of the latency issues that we have with LTE. So, you know, we said, I think that it's very, very difficult to get, well, in fact, impossible to get below two millisecond uh, latencies out of the radio interface for LTE, but where we're shortening the symbol duration and playing around a little bit with the concept of a TTI, then we're actually able to reduce that latency to sub millisecond proportions. The numerology aspect of 5G is probably one of the biggest changes. It's still OFDM, still doing OFDM things, but we're just changing the performance criteria of the radio interface. Now in the deployment of a 5G system, uh, we may have to choose well, which numerology do you want to use? 
And you, you might not actually be able to make your mind up because they're all so great. Uh, you know, why would you want to pick one? Why not have all of them? Well, that option's available to us as well. So when you deploy a radio cell and you've chosen your, your 20, 30, 50 megahertz radio channel in there, we don't necessarily have to apply one of these numerologies to the entirety of the channel. Uh, we could have all of them present uh, in a single radio cell and the mobiles that are present in that radio cell will just figure out what's going on in terms of which numerologies are being used. Now, what I'm hinting at here and what we will cover later on is a concept called the band width part. So really from this point onwards, we're starting to say, well, you know, it used to be like this in LTE, but now with 5G, we changed it to this because this is a better way of doing it.